People of Reddit, what is the worst thing a therapist, psychiatrist, or mental health professional has ever said to you? At that time, I moved from Birdsk, a small city in the region, to Novosibirsk. In the new school, preventive conversations were held with a psychologist. All the children told about their dreams, hobbies and shared their views on life. I said that I love rock and would like to spend my youth traveling or working. Apparently, the psychologist was not impressed. In front of the whole class, he said, Are you from Bursk? That explains why you're so weird. Everything in your city is not of this world. Interpretation of an offensive phrase in Russian. Hinting that you are crazy. I had a psychiatrist who was convinced I was anorexic even though I wasn't. It really sucked because my therapist and my psychiatrist worked at the same company and they had a policy where they don't help people with eating disorders. So even though I went to a specialist and they confirmed I didn't have an eating disorder I was still banned from that facility and lost my long term therapist. Nothing. She fell asleep in her chair while writing notes. I was talking about the death of my parents. I was 16. 14. Telling my shrink about how I was bullied in school. Do they make fun of your nose? Dot. No. And that's how I found out I have a big nose. Well. You have a lot going there. Followed by an awkward silence and nothing helpful. My mom saw shrink the year my brother almost died from a lung infection. She had had a miscarriage. And her husband lost his leg in an accident, all within about 4 months time. The shrink asked. Have you considered that maybe God hates you? When they say things like okay I understand how you are feeling thank you for telling me but proceeds to ignore most of the things I've said. I was dealing with a lot of family issues at the time and my ex had just broken up with me that week so I was taking it fairly hard. My therapist said it's because they found someone better and when I said no and tried to explain she just dug in deeper that my ex had dumped me because they found someone better than me. That my dad was in hell after committing suicide. I was 12. I ran out of there faster than anything. Edit. Thank you all for all the kind words and awards. Go back to work. You'll be fine. You don't need different meds. A couple of years ago, my partner was trying to find a therapist. In the first few appointments, this woman told her that if she didn't start doing certain things, it'd burn out and leave her. I'd never spoken to this woman in my life and she knew nothing about me. My girlfriend never went back after she struggled for a few weeks thinking it might be true before telling me what she said. That there was no point in continuing therapy because I was Aussie emotionally devoid and was wasting her time. Edited to add. It was a licensed therapist that I was referred to by my doctor after an emotional breakdown. Ironic much? Dot. Her comment came on our third appointment. We had never Aussie and she had made judgmental comments about my parenting choices in the first session so there wasn't any trust there. I've since found a new therapist who was amazing and now... Five years on I have left a toxic marriage. Dropped two of the three meds I was taking and I'm loving a genuinely happy life. While her comment initially stalled me and left me feeling that there was no hope. I'm now genuinely happy and loving life. I'm also halfway through the studies to be a counselor myself. I use my creativity with art and craft as both a coping skill and as something that gives me extra purpose in life. A psychologist told me that doing so is maladaptive. I didn't go back. Art is nice and all. But. Have you tried unhealthy substances like alcohol and drugs to cope with your issues? This is mild compared to other posts. I had seen one therapist about various issues affecting me. After a number of sessions and exploration we got to the cause of my problems being that my mum had died when I was young. I moved and started with a new therapist. I started explaining my background with my mum died. To which I got you can't blame it all on that. I get that therapists are trained to challenge your lines of thought. But this was just annoying f. You'll never do an important job like doctor. Veterinarian. Firefighter. Lawyer. 
consular. You'll probably end up in a Walmart for your whole life. I was 8 years old and still remember how mad my parents were lol. Edit. Thank you for the awards. Second edit. I am currently working at an international factory. Keeping my money to open my own shelter for stray animals and training them. Got two certifications. One for training and one for cooking. Maybe I'll end up cooking new recipes for the stray animals at my shelter, eh? Colon. Okay. This is actually my mum's story but it's relevant. 1980s in the UK. My mum is pregnant with me and my daddies. Well. Not a good person. My dad called my mum when she was out asking her to come home. Mum thought he sounded odd so asked a friend to come with her. Daddy nearest is drunk which has brought out all of his angry. Violent tendencies and he fires a gun that god knows where he got it at my mum. Missed. Thankfully. Police are called. A standoff happens and it's hours before he's finally taken down. The psychiatrist who treats him after tells my mum who was bracing herself for a good old fashioned divorce not to leave him as he wouldn't cope. Dart. That. Noise. Unfortunately. They did succeed in guilting mum into staying but she got out a few years later and gave me the best childhood. She passed a few years ago now but damn she was awesome. For this it's important to know that I live in Germany. I saw a psychologist once who treats and diagnoses adults with Asperger's. I was there for my second diagnostic interview. And my mother was with me to be interviewed as well. She told the doctor about my sensory issues. Especially with noise. Because I would occasionally scream and punch walls and throw stuff around if I was too overloaded with a sound. The psychologist just said something along the lines of well. 100 years ago people like this would have been treated rather differently around here. A. And laughed in our faces. Even if he wasn't talking about the national socialist euthanasia. Which took place not quite 100 years ago. I still felt incredibly disgusted and angry. The entire interview with him was a disaster. But this was clearly the worst thing he did. I was having panic attacks daily and the med he gave me made my anxiety worse. Turned out I just have bad reactions to SSRIs and that was all he kept trying like a moron. Anyway I'm in his office and he seems to be taking it personally that all the SSRIs he has put me on are giving me seriously bad side effects. Have you just given up then? The er asks. Do you just want to be like this the rest of your life? Obviously I'm not that is why I'm in this office trying new medications. I was so angry and yet also having a panic attack at the same time. I ended up just walking out and finding a new psychiatrist later. You need to find religion and also buy this self help book series that I wrote. Had to go to the hospital because I had cut myself about 4 years ago. I sat in the room where there are multiple different people and cases going on so there wasn't any walls in between patients. And what does the head nurse do? We got a cutter. We got a cutter. To the whole damn room. You could see how uncomfortable the other nurses were and even some policemen looking after someone else looked upset she decided to yell it to everyone. Made me feel like complete garbage on top of how I already felt at the time. Had a therapist tell me that my soul, long before I was born, chose my parents and subsequent childhood abuse so that I could learn from it. By this logic, of course, the abused person is always in control and the abuser is helpless. Argue with that logic. Needless to say I never saw her again. Edit. Just editing this due to all the comments. The therapist subscribed to the just world theory which is often, but not always taught in western psychology. The problem, of course, other than the victim blaming, is the blatant narcissism required to believe someone else exists only to fulfill your soul's destiny by harming you. Abusers are 100% responsible for their own behavior, not their targets. I remember giggling to myself after I got home thinking I should have just kicked her really hard in the face and went. Welp. I guess your soul must have chosen that for you. Maybe you shouldn't be here. I had better luck with medication. 
I was explaining to a therapist that I used to run a cancer charity and part of my depression came from talking to so many people who had lost someone or were in the process of losing someone and being an emotional sponge for them. I went to see a psychiatrist because I was having symptoms of PTSD after an abusive ex tried to kill me when I left him. Then stalked me. Forced his way into my apartment and arped me. The psychiatrist, an older man, told me that I needed to work on my physical appearance and demeanor to be more feminine and demure. Because quality men weren't attracted to women who looked and behaved like me. And if I ever tried to get involved in another relationship without making myself more appealing to quality men first. I'd end up right back in the same situation. I was violently s sorely assaulted when I was 11 years old on Christmas day. When my father found out about it a little over a week later. He had a massive heart attack and died in our driveway while I watched through the living room window. When I went back to school after winter break the next week. The school social worker called me into her office. I will never forget what she said. You know you killed your father. Right? Full stop. Those words have haunted me for over 20 years now. Do you have suicidal thoughts? Me. Yes. Do you have a plan for killing yourself? Me. Yes. Do you feel you're a danger to yourself or will harm yourself before your next appointment? Me. Yes. Great. I'll double your Prozac. See you next week. I was a nurse. I know if a patient says those sort of things it's an instant 24 hours keep in the hospital or admission for monitoring. And I wasn't joking. I meant it 100%. I never went back. Events happened that kept me from following through instantly with my plan but I'll never forgive that bastard. I left the office thinking. Welp. Even a dude that's paid to care whether I live or die doesn't care. That seals the deal. I was fresh out of high school and really depressed. No friends. Horrible relationship with my mom and stepdad. No one to confide in. I gave in after being pressured to see someone because mental health issues run in my family. I booked an hour assessment. I was in and out within 20 minutes. Dude completely dismissed me because I was young and every young person goes through these things. Everyone worries about their future. This is totally normal. Took me 3 years to go back and was admitted after my second appointment. You make good eye contact and you're an engaging. Interesting conversationalist. Clearly you can't have ADHD. My other patients are meth addicts with no direction in life. You think your problems are as bad as theirs? This guy was an ADHD specialist I was seeing to try and make sense of my crippling executive dysfunction and lifelong problems with attentiveness. He just spent our sessions telling me my problems weren't bad enough because apparently everyone with an attention disorder is an opdeliquent. Also. Way to throw your other patients, who are surely coming to you to deal with their own demons, under the bus. Dude. Can't remember the exact wording. But essentially that me being s sorely assaulted by a friend and abused by an ex was invalid because I was a man and that really ed me up for a while. Made me afraid of getting psychiatric or therapeutic help again for a while until things got really bad. Went back. Saw a better therapist at a different clinic and she actually talked to me about how horrible that person was. It was really helpful. Are you lesbian because of a trauma? In most cases. That's what happened. How do your parents deal with your s or orientation? I was not there about anything even remotely related to my s or orientation. A counselor once suggested that I could have avoided s or abuse as a child by not being so shy. Something to the effect of. It's important to understand that even as a child. You have to know how to advocate for yourself. It was a very bizarre thing to say. I know that this would be a bad scenario for a lot of people and considered the worst. But I've had 3 counselors in the last 6 or so years and the best one was the most unprofessional ever. But. It worked. My previous 2 were these hyper clinical. Safe space. Understanding and hushed voice stereotypes and it made me very aware I was seeking help. 
My third had this loudmouth cockney pub land lady seen it all vibe to her that just completely disarmed you. She laughed at dumb emotional stuff I said. Called me out when I lied was talking. Occasional bit of swearing and she suggested what some might consider unconventional. It just gave the impression that she gave her instead of other health professionals that might nod the hour out. Sure. You might say she gauged what environment would help me best and created it. But there was too much of her in it for me to believe that. I was 15. I was secretly in a relationship with an older, abusive man. My mom found my birth control and threw it away. I ended up getting pregnant. I got an abortion without my parents knowing. It was a lot to carry. I got really depressed. I became really self-destructive. My parents didn't understand. I couldn't tell them I had gotten an abortion when they had forever preached that people who got abortions were sick murderers. They took me to counseling. I finally admitted to the counselor what had happened. He was religious and told me that I was right. God was disappointed in me and that I am a murderer. It's been almost 20 years and I've still never told my parents or anyone in my family and I still hate myself. Psychiatrist put me on oxycontins because I told him if there was an antidepressant that made me feel like I do when I have had oxys then I would feel much better. 10 years ago things were a lot different. I guess? When I was in my early 20s. I was still a virgin at the time and it was really upsetting me. A therapist told me it was a good thing and then showed me pictures of STDs. She told me that STDs were God's punishment for immoral behavior and one in three people had one. I told her they were probably irresponsible people that didn't use condoms and she told me that condoms couldn't protect me from God's anger. She then prayed I remained a virgin until marriage and that I would no longer desire to commit the sin of premarital sx. Looking back. I should have reported her to some sort of therapist license board. Also. I've had plenty of sx since about a year after that and still no stds. I guess god isn't angry enough at me. Stress is good for you. Said to me when I explained I was so stressed out that I broke down every single day during math class and was having consistent breakdowns and feeling extremely burnt out. Technically there is truth to this. But it's a bell curve. The stress productivity curve is essentially. Lowest stress. No or low productivity. You don't care. Or it can be postponed. Procrastination. Apathy. Etc. Medium stress. Motivated to do something about the stress. Can be very productive if maintained and managed well. E. G. A deadline for a project and you are keeping up with the work to complete it on time. High stress tends to cause a big drop in performance. Motivation quality and has significant impact on health and function very high stress leads to burnout emergencies breakdowns giving up any several other very negative outcomes obviously it sounds like you were in the latter two stages which was completely inappropriate for that provider to say if they were fully aware of your history not to me but my sisters had said that they wanted to start focusing on me instead I took a psych test and when we were going over the results the psychologist implied that all my mental health issues were due to being too sensitive and therefore my fault. I remember feeling broken for like a week afterwards. Just crying when I was alone. That same guy wrote in my psych report that I was lying on my test. When I had previously told him myself report very poorly. If I met this dude in a dark alley tomorrow I'd probably break his self important nose. I was 17. Recently homeless because my parents kicked me out for being B and dating a girl. She was incredibly abusive, she also once killed a neighbor's dog by feeding it cut up razor shards, and as a result I was deeply depressed and anxious. I saw the therapist at my college and was told that women aren't abusers with a real snooty attitude. When I countered with examples. She scoffed and said it must not be that bad if I didn't just leave. And then asked for my payment. I was young and scared and had no support net and in hindsight was trying to find someone to help me mentally steal myself to leave. Instead the therapist made me feel invalidated and weak and stupid. 
and as a result I stayed in a relationship that only got worse and more dangerous. I stayed for 5 more years. Eventually figured it out. But she did so much harm. I wish I had that time back. That I just needed to read the bible and pray about my problems. This wasn't a preacher or religious counselor. How do you not have a boyfriend? You're so pretty. Yari really pretty. Truly. And so on from the same. My wife and I were seeing this marriage counselor. I don't remember what exactly was said. But our last visit we left the office completely angry at each other. On the way home we looked at each other and both said. Oh so we are we so angry? Then we realized it was the counselor that made us so. Told her how the pandemic has depleted my clientele and she said just get a new job. Like have you noticed what's going on? I told my one and only therapist that I felt like I didn't have a personality and that it seemed like I changed myself depending on who I was around. He asked me what remains constant. I tell him it's my passion for things. Especially fiction but also just subjects I find interesting. That I'm good at looking up everything about it and retaining 90% of what I read. He laughed at me and told me that didn't make me special. That was just helpful for trivia night. On a more serious note. When one of my friends went to a therapist and told her they didn't feel worthy of being alive. The therapist said if you don't want to be alive. Just kill yourself then. There's no point in staying alive if you don't want to be. Baffles me beyond belief. Even if this particular therapist was still in training. Comma if you don't want to be alive. Just kill yourself then. I think you're fine. You seem calm and collected. It's just all in your head. Oh yay. That why I was there. I was trying to get an official diagnosis for anxiety. Depression. And adhat or autism. I was in college. Having a much harder time concentrating and learning than I did in high school. I just wanted something to make it easier. Whether it was a pill or better coping mechanisms. But I felt like I was floating on a log during a hurricane. I was stressed. Had thoughts of suicide. In the end I got nothing. It was an hour long meeting on a video and she dismissed all of my concerns. This was also after my primary doctor dismisses a lot of my concerns as well. It's be 6 years since I've gone to a doctor because of these experiences. Like what's the point if they aren't actually there to help me? I know all doctors aren't like this. But it makes it hard for me to want to go because I get anxious and stressed at the thought of being dismissed again. I'm Asian and my therapist was white. He was very supportive every week. Until COVID happened. I don't feel comfortable getting the virus. I'd rather provide my services to someone else. I just left and I'm currently in a tug of war finding one. So in our last session we talked about you finding your mom dead and how that's affected you. Today let's talk about your girlfriend. Have you considered if it's your fault she cheated? There must have been something you've done to cause all this. Pushed me from dark to full blown suicidal. Sophomore year of nursing school I told my counselor that I was getting really scared I was going to relapse into anorexia because of my perfectionism in school. If I got less than 93% on assignments I felt that I didn't deserve to eat and would restrict. Her response. Well I really admire your hard work and I think it's admirable what high standards you hold yourself to. That dedication is going to help your future patients. I was also her last appointment of the day. She was behind her desk packing her things up to leave while she was talking to me. I had my counselor tell me that he doesn't want to know what's in my head and therefore doesn't want to help me because he doesn't want to think about those things. My therapist emailed me and her other clients announcing her retirement. Which would have been fine. Had she obscured our email addresses by BCCing them and not just having a list of visible recipients. So now I have the email addresses of all her other clients. And they have mine. Made me pretty uncomfortable. My psychiatrist tried to push a religion on me when I expressed my suicidal thoughts. She said she went to Greece and Christianity is totally different over there as if it would make a difference when I had already told her multiple times I wasn't interested in religion. 
After I said I know my father loves me. How? Why do you say that? He sounds crazy. Thanks. I guess. You should go back living with your mother. She does not hate you. I know. I am a mother myself and it is impossible to hate your own child. You just need to give her the opportunity to show you she loves you. I was young. And a fool. And desperately wanted to be good enough to be loved by my own mother so I complied. Two years of heavy conflicts later and my only way out, the only one I saw at the time, was moving in with an abusive boyfriend almost 10 years older than me. Semicolon. To this day I often think about that therapist. About how our own bias may keep us from seeing things for what they are. I've had individual psychologists disagree with my symptoms when I bring them forward. Like. Buddy. You don't get to tell me I don't have trouble with social interaction. Currently struggling to get both my ADHD inattentive and autism diagnosis officially despite my current psych finally agreeing I fit the bill after seeing him 3 years.